I'm David Nash. I'm from the Shepherd School. Um, we've just added a preparedness blog to our site. This is our very first uh, edition. And so what we're going to do today is talk about water filtration. I've got a do-it-yourself kit to make a water filter very similar in style and concept to the Big Berkeley filters. The reason that we picked to do water filters for the first project is because water filters are very central to your emergency preparedness plan. Each individual that, that you're dealing with that you're planning for needs at least a gallon of water a day. Since water is heavy, it's bulky, it takes a lot of storage, storing enough water for 72 hours or, or however long you choose to store uh, water for, for your family, that can quickly eat up space. So it's a lot more effective to have some sort of means of purifying water. There's lots out there. You've got distillation, you've got chemical treating, and, and all sorts of methods. But today we're just going to talk about filters. The filter that we're going to use comes from monolithic. Basically, it's a, it's a uh, ceramic dome. Pores are down to the half micron size, so they're very, very tiny pores. And when water fills those pores up, the inside of this, there's some activated charcoal and some silver. And with the filtration plus the activated charcoal plus the silver, this is very effective. It gets about 99% of the taste out, 95% of the chlorine, 96% uh, of iron, 98% of lead, herbicides, pesticides, uh, perchlorates, arsenic, lots of things that this works. Now, with this particular filter, and there's other brands, other models, but with this particular filter, um, it has a shelf life, basically an indefinite shelf life. Uh, however, once you start using it, the activated charcoal is good for about six to eight months. So uh, you could do what I plan on doing and buying a couple of these uh, that I store away, and then I have one that I use day-to-day -day basis, so I get used to the flow rates and those sorts of things. Uh, before that, we use this for the first time, Got to go over to the sink and, and wash off. There's some ceramic dust from manufacturing, so either using a, a washcloth or a Scotch Sprite pad, something to, to just wash off the uh, uh, matter, the dust. The next thing you're going to need is two buckets. Doesn't really matter. The manufacturer says you can use number 10 cans, up to waste paper, you know, garbage cans, 50 gallon drums. Doesn't really matter. I have chosen to use three. Uh, gallon icing buckets that I got from a local baker and these were free may take you a little time of talking calling around uh, but basically I just sent, sent a couple emails call, called a couple bakeries and they said yeah sure come get them and, and so I got these for free you're going to need two and they're going to be need to be the same type and they need to have lids so what you need to do is take the lid one of the lids find the center of it which I did that by looking at the mold marks from when they use the injection molding process to make the lid. There's a little divot. Found that divot, took a half inch drill, cordless drill, just drilled a hole straight through there. Prettied up the uh, edges. Then on the bottom of the second bucket, I found that divot again to mark center, drill, drilled a half inch hole. What's going to happen is this filter is going to sit inside the bucket with the, uh, one of the washers. It's also going to go through the top of the lid with the other washer and the wing nut. Tight nose down and it makes a unit. Then the bottom bucket, drill a hole, and I happen to, to have wanted it to be in the center of the bucket right under the handles, but it doesn't have to be. Um, and depending on the size of the spigot, depends on how you move it. This one was bigger than what came with the, uh, than what you could have got with this, and so it's a little higher up. There's, it's about half inch from the, uh, from the base. It doesn't really matter because this is just a concept. You put this through. Then what you do, you fill the top bucket up with your, with your water. As clean as it can be, um, because the cleaner it is, the longer your filter's going to last. Then the water will fill up the filter, drip through the bottom of the filter, and fill up the, uh, the bottom bucket. Now, when you first start using this, this is dry, so it's going to take time to fill up. But once that it's completely filled, you can expect about a gallon an hour of flow. So you need to take that into your plan and realize that if you're going to need this full bucket to cook, 
you should fill it up three hours before you plan on cooking. So uh, it's recommended that if you fill up a canteen or you get a glass of water, whatever you do, however much water you take out, you put that much water back in so that you always have a full bottom bucket. So what we're going to do now before we put it all together, we're going to wash the filter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew the wing nut, take off these plastic uh, washers just so I don't lose them, take my rag, I'm going to go over here to the sink, wash this off. Take my bucket, put it through, well, put the washer back on, put the washer back on, push it through the hole, oh, before I do that, a lot easier to put the filter, the pre-filter on before it's inside the bucket, put the pre-filter on. Take the top of the lid, and you can put the top there. That way it'll sit back on the bucket. Hold this. Put the washer on there. Tighten it back down. Now the lid's going to spin a little bit while it's tightened it down. But when it stops spinning, you get it tight. Pretty tight, but it don't have to be, you know, torqued. Get it tightened. This is your top half. Now what we want to do is we want to fill this up with water to check for Now while this is filling up with water, come over here, take the uh, nut off the spigot, put it through the hole that you drilled in the uh, bucket. Screw this down. This does need to be kind of tight because you don't want this to leak. Okay. Reached over the top of the um, device. You see it's not really leaking. No water's coming out the bottom yet because it takes a second for the water to filter through the filter. So we're going to sit this over. And I'm putting it inside the, uh, the hole of the drain so as not to bust that uh, plastic uh, tip off. Fill this up with water and check that for leaks. Now because our filter, our spigot on our filter is a little bigger than what comes with the uh, monolithic package, it had to be a little higher up. And so what that does is it has a little extra reservoir of water underneath the spigot. So you have to take that to account. But even though you may fill up your top with three full gallons of water, when you empty it out of the bottom, it's not going to all come out. There will be a little bit of water left. We filled it up, we checked it, no leaks, spigot works. Okay, we're going to bump that out. filter on there. Now, as you can't see, but there's a little bit of drops of air coming out of the top of this uh, ceramic filter as the air is being displaced with water. And as the water cycles through and fills this up, water will start to drip through. And when this is completely uh, you know, saturated with water, like I said, it'll take about a, a gallon an hour of water dripping through here and I can just get a drink of water. Now, if you like this, feel free to comment on the blog um, or on YouTube or wherever you happen to see this video. If you want more information, go to the Shepherd School website, www.tngun.com.